Can beauty like this arise by chance? I will show you some simulations that reveal why the answer is yes. These are randomly generated creatures. Red hearts, white limbs, blue claws and green shell. If a claw touches a heart, it transforms the other creature into a copy. If a claw touches a limb, the limb is cut off, changing the shape of the creature. In this simulation I made that you can try online, 100 creatures fight it out among themselves. If we speed it up, we will see natural selection in action. Creatures with few claws and exposed hearts will soon get turned into more efficient shapes. And after a few minutes, we have a winner. This pickaxe thing with a protected heart and plenty of claws. Let's do it again. Now we get another shape, but still one with a lot of claws and a protected heart. I find this really fascinating. Everything that happens is random, but we still get an efficient outcome. But that is simply a mathematical consequence of natural selection. Better shapes will multiply. Here is another simulation where animals have more purpose. We have predators who eat prey, and the prey eat plants who spawn in randomly. When a predator eats a prey, it duplicates. When a prey eats a plant, it also duplicates. Both are set to seek the nearest prey or plant, but their attributes are randomly allocated. Predators have three attributes, speed, sight range and turning ability. They also have to eat or they die from starvation. Prey have four attributes, speed, avoidance of predators, seeking ability and turning ability. When either reproduces, there is a chance of mutation in which the attributes are slightly altered. There is no goal of the simulation, but over time we will still see more effective attributes evolving, most notably speed. These blue predators have grown really fast and are doing a dangerously good job of eating the prey. If there is no prey left, the simulation ends. But when there are fewer plant eaters, more plants can start to accumulate, which lays the foundation for a subsequent population boom from the plant eaters. We will see it happen here with uh, blue-green prey animals coming in from the top left. But that also means more food for predators who then multiply rapidly. In fact, they here manage to eat all the prey and the simulation is over. Seeing the last predators die of starvation, it is really striking that complex ecosystems in nature manage to keep such a delicate but sustainable balance of many different kinds of prey, predators and plants. No wonder it takes thousands or even millions of years to develop. When AI models are trained, they usually have an end goal and a scoring system. Like if you're training an AI to learn to walk or run, there is a score for going further and the trainer selects the best genes to develop, like in this silly running simulation I made. But that is not evolution so much as breeding on desired characteristics, like farmers do to make vegetables larger or sheep woolier. In nature, evolution works completely at random from the three ingredients of variation plus natural selection plus genetic mutations. In nature, the reward is not an artificial score, but simply reproduction. Traits that increase chances of reproduction will over time become more common. And how could it be otherwise? It's a mathematical and statistical fact. But of course, it took a genius by the name of Charles Darwin to really recognize this. This is why I like simulations based completely on reproduction. They really get to the core of what evolution is. The final simulation I want to show is the most open-ended. Here we again have blue animals that eat plants to reproduce, but unlike the last similar simulation, they don't have any pre-programmed behavior of seeking plants. Each animal has a neural network with sensors for plants and predators, and two outputs, speed and angle. New animals spawn in from time to time, but there is crucially no objective of the simulation. Animals are not instructed to do anything. But over time, simply by chance, animals that react to inputs from plants in a way that causes them to seek out plants will reproduce. When they reproduce, their traits are preserved with mutation to the next generation. And after a while, we will see the game board dominated by really efficient plant seekers. But I did not tell them to do that. That is just what happens when we have variation, natural selection and genetic mutations. You can find all of these simulations online. Check the description for the links and uh, feel free to play around with them. 
In the final simulation you can also spawn in predators and if you really fine-tune the parameters it's possible to get a kind of balance between predators and animals that go on for a while where they evolve together. All of these simulations were programmed in JavaScript with instructions from me but with the code written by ChatGPT. It was really fun to make them although it took a lot of trial and error. But I think they reveal some interesting things about evolution, ecosystems and the cycles in them. In a future video I plan to apply the principles of evolution to political systems as well and see how different states or empires with different characteristics or aims fight for survival. See you then.